Hello, Network to Code community. My name is Tim Fayola. I'm a developer advocate here at Network to Code. And today we're going to be going through a Notabot introduction session. This is the agenda we'll be following. Intent and reality. Oftentimes it's asked, can't the network be my source of truth? And the answer is no. The network is your source of reality, not truth. And we will discuss why those two are not the same. Networks and intent. So network architecture documents will describe the intended network architecture. Those docs are intentionally crafted. And if the network does not reflect those documents, the network is wrong. Along the same lines, so the source of truth holds the intended state of the network. So just as those architecture documents hold the intended architecture, the source of truth holds data on the intended state of the network. And so if the network does not reflect that intended state, the network is wrong. That is why we call it a source of truth, or you could also call it a source of intent. This slide shows a relationship between intent and reality. And here's a fun fact, the delta between the intended state and the actual state is your workload. And in a scaled environment, you have to automate that workload. So what is the source of truth, excuse me. So what is source of truth data? It's any data that reflects the intended state of the network. For example, IP addresses, VLAN assignments, planning states, active, planned, decommissioned, et cetera. What is not source of truth data? CRC errors, light levels, or any other transient data is not source of truth data. The source of truth is a necessity, and we're going to discuss why. Think of automation as a journey, and there's a spectrum of capabilities along this journey. And moving to the right on the spectrum requires more sophistication. For example, on the very far left side, basic scripting typically involves individual devices, simple scripts or playbooks, individual tasks, and the operator can input parameters manually into the script or playbook. As you start moving to the right, getting to orchestration and closed loop automation, where timing is more important, feedback is required, there's multiple tasks or devices in the workflow being automated. Um, that type of automation requires programmatic access to data. So it's no longer possible at that point to input manually parameters. The automation architecture needs a source of truth to access programmatically. Centralization matters. A centralized source of truth means your automation won't have to access multiple resources. This greatly simplifies your automation framework and platform. A centralized source of truth also ensures that the intent questions are asked and answered in the planning phase instead of the execution phase. Additionally, from a business perspective, the network is often considered to be a single resource. So a single source of truth should reflect the desired state of that resource. From the prior conversation, you can safely conclude that a centralized authoritative source of truth is necessary for an automation framework. Which brings us to Notobot. Notobot is a source of truth. It is a centralized source of truth for authoritative data on the intended state of the network. And along those lines, Notobot can consolidate data from disparate sources of record into a single centralized source of truth. For example, if uh, you have a separate IPAM system that's your source of record for IPAM data, Notobot can programmatically access that and import that data so Notabot can still provide your automation authoritative data just from a single source. On the other hand, Notabot can also push authoritative data to secondary sources. If you have organizations that for some reason, excuse me, cannot access Notabot directly, Notabot can push data into 
the tools and databases and other infrastructure for that organization so they can access Nautabot's authoritative data. Nautabot is also an automation platform. Nautabot has a suite of automation capabilities, including it can run user-defined scripts as jobs, it has data sharing via webhooks, it supports Git, it supports Jinja templating, and it also supports GraphQL and REST APIs. Nautabot is also an application platform. Just as the phone enables high value applications, we at Network Code believe a source of truth can be an enabler for high value applications as well. Organizations can leverage Nautabot's app platform to host their own automation applications. Nautabot's app platform can host open source apps, custom built apps, and organizations can also save a lot of development time using Nautabot's application platform. For example, Nautabot's ChatOps framework supports chatbots for multiple chat platforms. So if you have a chatbot in, let's say, Slack, and you need to also get that chatbot into WebEx, for example, that's as simple as enabling a single flag within Nautobot's framework to allow that chatbot to now exist in WebEx as well. Here are some additional Nautobot resources. You can access the Network to Code public Slack workspace. And within that workspace, there's two channels that may be of interest to you. One is the Nautobot channel, where you can ask any question you have regarding Nautobot, whether you're having problems with it, or you have some questions on how to implement it, or just general questions for capabilities, you can get those questions answered in that, uh, in that channel. And the Nautobot chat platform in that workspace uh, hosts a Nautobot chatbot, so you can test to see uh, what it's like to interact with a Nautobot chatbot. Please do ask your questions in these channels. We do want to help. There's also the Nautobot public sandboxes, and the Nautobot landing page on the Network to Code website. Finally, there's an All Things Nautobot playlist at the Network to Code channel on YouTube. Thank you for your time today. This concludes the Nautobot overview presentation. Thank you.